Oh, let's go to the women because I don't like any of the men's games. Boo, boo. Okay, this game I like a lot, actually. Okay, I don't know where to start. Let's start. This is um, uh, Begum who, okay. So this is round two, unless it's round three. Okay, this is round two of the women's and this was uh, varying fortunes of the players. <clears throat> So you can start here, my YouTube editor. So black's up a pawn. Black has two passed pawns. What else? And Megan Lee lost the first round, which we saw against Crush. And what we didn't see, well, I mean, unless you're watching the event, but not this video, was Begum totally, totally lost against Tatev in round one and winning. And even when Tatev resigned, it didn't make a lot of sense. But, okay, so... White's a higher rated player. White won the first round. Black lost the first round, but that, that doesn't matter. Okay. So Black wants to trade queens and have two connected past pawns and win the end game. And White's like, no, I don't want to trade queens. Terrible. Okay. E5 was like a 20 minute think, if I remember correctly, which I don't. And it's not really a good move. Okay. All right. G6, H4. Get to the critical point. Okay, so the queen b6 is a great move. It threatens rook takes g3 check. It also threatens rook b2. So uh, queen b6 is great. Okay, now, here's something you can't learn from engines. But you're going to learn it from me, and obviously it's insulting to you, so you know I'm going to tell you about it. Also, thanks for the five subs. I might have thanked him, but maybe not. Okay. Let's say you're losing. The engine says your pawn's plus three, plus six, plus nine. I don't care. Okay. It's getting low. You know, three, six, nine. To the windows. Now, your opponent's plus five. The rest of the game, the engine says plus five. Your pawn does nothing wrong, and you lose. And you're like, yep, he was plus five. I played really well after that, but nah, too bad. I can't do it. I was losing. There's nothing I could do. And an engine won't help you trick your opponent and give chances. And this is why White is such a good player. White realizes the truth hurts. White's losing. White's been outplayed. White has less time and so forth. Uh, her opponent's name is easier to pronounce, shorter, right on the score sheet is a lot easier. So black has a lot of advantages. What white needs to do is confuse the audience, which is her opponent. And when you're completely losing, like you are here, the engine's like plus four, plus five, plus 10, you have to confuse the audience. And that's why good players are tricky when they're losing because that's part of being a good player is not going down without a fight. Okay. So here, uh, white played, if the ad interrupts you, make sure you subscribe so that doesn't happen. So white played E6. Now that loses, but every move loses and that makes it the trickiest. So that's by far the best move. For example, to show you how how strong it is, rook takes g3, which was winning for black last move, now is winning for white. And here's what's funny about that. You would think, well, of course white's winning. King h2 threatens both rooks. King h2 is actually a blunder. Rook g4, if you're like, yay, I'm up a rook, look at me, I'm Sandra O. Oh. You're going to get checkmated. Queen d6. Queen F6, and Papa John's. If you queen, defending this, then I check, and then mate. And actually, after King H2, Black's winning. King F1 wins. And what's funny is, if I had Black, probably I would see check here, and I would stop analyzing. But if I was better at chess, and I saw this, and I saw this lost, I might play this blunder. 
And then king f1 is winning for white. Both rooks are still attacked, but there's no main. So it's funny how rook g3 loses. It's not too surprising that both of your rooks are attacked, so maybe you're losing. So you have to take on e6. It's the only winning move, but now black's king is more, you know, there's more issues with the king. King h1 is also the best move. Unbelievable. She plays the best move every move. Okay, rook e7 is not a good move. And black had to see rook g7 and analyze it correctly, and she didn't. Rook b2 is the obvious move, right? And the reason white played e6 and king h1 is now I can go here threatening two different checkmates. And if the king was on g1, this would be mate. If the pawn was on e5, there's no threat. So now you understand how tricky white is. White played e6 and king h1. That's genius. That makes this move look bad. In fact, that's the correct move. And now black has to find this and white has nothing. What White's got nothing here. Black wins. The pawns attacked twice and defended zero times. And black's up two pawns. So black's completely winning here. But she didn't do that. She played rook e7. She wanted a rook on b3 to stop the queen from getting this diagonal. Queen d2 is actually a small error. She should have played rook d1 to play like rook here and try to get some counterplay. But okay, queen d2. Yeah. She's trying to trade queens. White's like, I don't want to trade queens. E5 is a very bad move. And she ends up losing her E5 pawn. And so by playing E6 and King H1, she set her opponent the most problems. So that was, that was fantastic. Rook F3 is probably the best move. Then White can't really do anything. Okay. So now White gets the F file. White was threatening Rook F6 and G6 is attacked. The Queen's attacked. The rook, everything's attacked. Okay, rook f4, you can't take it because the rook takes. She wants to triple up on the bubble up. Now, the winning move, I think she played it was, oh, no, rook, no, the strongest move was rook b1. Now, here's what happens when the players aren't super GMs, which they're not, is they're winning. They know they're winning, all true, so they don't want any complications, but by not playing the most accurate, correct move, it's not as winning. It's much less winning. This is really winning. You're threatening that. So Rook takes is forced. Now there's no pin here, so you take this. And now, I mean, I got two passed pawns. And this is just completely winning for black. There's, white doesn't have any more attack on the black king. But she played Rook d3. I think she wanted to play rook d1, but she didn't realize she could just play rook b1 because, you know, the rook's defended. So. Okay, and king g2, so that rook here doesn't pin the rook. Check. And then she plays a really passive move and loses this pawn. Now, black's probably still winning, but this is much tougher, much tougher. Okay, then I want to get to the rook ending because I think it's really interesting, the rook ending. This ending should be easily winning, but black made a couple errors making it tough. Possibly white was drawing later, maybe. Okay, I like rook check. I like king f7. I like it, okay? Rook c2 forced because check was going to win the pawn. Like that, okay? I don't like king f8, but I think it doesn't matter. I think everything wins. I think king e it's the best, but... You don't want to worry about these pawns because this, this is going to win the game. This king can't move. This is going to win the game. White doesn't have time to do any of this. That's, that's queening. I got two pawns, one for each of you. This move's all right. Okay, king f1's excellent. If she can get her king over here <clears throat> and make these pawns ineffective, she has drawing chances. Okay, so I'm, I'm not complaining about anything that black did until now. Until now. Um, let me find the position. King. Let's see, where am I? I went to analysis mode and I confused myself. Okay. All right, we're on move 62. So here I don't like what black did. Um, if I was black, 
I would either play king e8, attacking the rook, get off my pawn, get off my lawn, and more likely I would just push this here and here and here, push my pawns. Okay. Instead, she played this move. Okay. That's really bad. She might still be winning, but that's really bad. That's the worst king ever. So playing rook here, when the king walk up, it's not the worst king ever. If you want your rook to move, it's because it's attacked. If the rook doesn't get attacked, I just make two queens. That was the point of king here. King here was to attack the rook. But it's not attacked yet. She should wait for it to get attacked. Then the king is far from these pawns. Then she could win the game another way. Then she could start taking these pawns because the king is over here. So she should wait for king d1, then move her rook. So she should make a move that helps her, like c5, or king e8, or b4. But she goes here without, and she's threatening check, but king, but, whoa. But king d2, it's not check, and then this pawn's hanging. My king got out. So this is a really bad move. Okay, c6 is okay. Rook c7 is good. b4 is okay. Rook here is good. Rook b5 is good. The king of pawning is completely winning. Outside past pawn. Rook c7 is good. And then she checked, which is not good. Forcing the king closer to this pawn. Okay. Now that she's played some inaccuracies, she can't win the game with these pawns anymore. But the king is really far from these pawns. So now it's time to win over here. And she did do that. She tried to win on the on that side of the board. Okay, she wants to go here and here and here and here. Great. Okay, and she played king e3, which is a big mistake because with this passed pawn and my rook behind it, it should be a relatively simple win. However, if I take this pawn and you take this pawn, that should be a relatively simple draw. So rook here was quite bad. She should have played rook b6 and gone for this later when the king had to stop the pawn. Then the king is really far away. So after here, now white's drawing. Rook here, rook check, king moves somewhere, rook takes, uh, rook takes, and this is just a draw. This is all, the, the engine doesn't think black's better. Obviously black's better, but it's a, it's a draw. And so what black needs to do to avoid that is to play here to save the pawn. You don't want the rook in front of the pawn. You want the rook behind the pawn. Black wants the rook to be switched. Okay. And our best prepared, our best chess players refuse to fight. In fact, they would rather switch than fight. Fight the power. God damn, I'm the greatest ever at everything. Man, I can't believe how good I am at everything. Greatest streamer ever. Only I know it, but still. Yeah. Someday, some of you will get that. Okay. Now, in this position, we can stop your king, and this is just going to be a draw. So white actually missed a draw here with rook b5. All these rook moves by black messed it up. Instead, she played king e3, allowing black to win again. And she played rook b6, which she's forced to do. White forced her opponents to play the winning move. Well, you have, you have to get behind the pawn now. So, Okay. And now king d2, b3, b2 here. Okay. And from this point on, I like the way black played, I think. I like it. What she should have done is played rook b4 so that I could never play g4 and try to double up on the bubble up. She played here, which forces g4. So that's, that's not a good move. Right? White wants to trade all the pawns off and double the pawns. So that's a very bad move in time trouble. She should have played rook b4, making sure this move is never possible. And then she could have played rook here, rook here, rook here, rook here. 
that she would win because the white king is here instead of here. Okay, g4, x clam, good move. Now, Megan played unbelievably good. It was great what she did. She took, and then she played an amazing move here. Amazing. Best move of her life, even if the engine doesn't say so. King g7, showing amazing understanding of the position. If you lose this pawn, which she does, you want your king to go up this way. Your king's not winning the pawn that way. So king g7, you don't lose this pawn. If you lose this pawn, you don't mind. And if h5, then king here wins. Perfect. And the main variation to see is you can go here. Otherwise, you know. So king g7 is a great move. And this is the game. I've already left the game, of course, so we'll never figure it out. Never. Okay. And in this position, <clears throat> uh, white has better drawing chances by playing rook g1 because there's some positions where the rook is on the first rank and black can't move his king and her king and pawn up, which doesn't isn't true here. So in the game, it went like this, and then Megan played the excellent rook c4 cutting the king off, and now it's as shallow, now it's easy. Now it's less easy if white could play rook here check. And when I say it's less easy, it's pretty easy. But this is easy, easy. This is different than easy, because now I'm gonna just queen my pawn. If the rook is here and I start checking, you're gonna to have to use your rook to hook yourself up, and then I can come over here. It's still winning for black, but it's tougher. So actually she played rook, she, oh, she played here, and then she played rig g1. So in this position, if she had foreseen that, she would have played rig g1 here. Okay, and then if she wants to cut the king off, now my rook is here. So before you push this pawn, I can get your rook off of this rank. And then I can start checking you. And the idea is, like, you can't win because there's no way to win. Okay? Now there is a way to win, but... This would have been tougher. Okay, so in, in this instance, if this had happened, okay, what black wins by going up. Okay, and now if you go here, the king is really far away, so rook g8 wins. If the king was here, it would be a draw. So now white tries to get back, but he can't get back, and everything wins. King here, king here, g5. It's too slow. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't get back. And this is the only winning move. And eventually we get to Lucena position. We can't, we can't get our king back in time. If our king was around here, we would draw, but you can't get there. So if you look at the engine for like a minute, it says plus a thousand because it's a win. And this is a table-based position, so you can look it up. But this would have been tougher for Megan to win. After rook g3, you might be like, I don't see the difference. What are you talking about? Why does it matter if the rook is here or here? Why are you, what's, what are you going on about? It matters because the rook is here. We have distance and we can check. And if you want to have cake, which you do after the game, not during the game, then you have to go the distance. She's all alone in a time of need. Thunderbird1414 14, 14 subscribed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I could play Rook H1 check, you have to win that complicated way. Now, if you check your, your Rook, that's it. And you don't have time for doing the same thing because now my pawn's on the fourth rank. So now when I go here, you know, that game's over. You know, G4 and, you know, and Papa John's. And the engine announces made actually. Okay, so she tried, but she failed miserably. By the way, I want to point out my how impressive it is in time trouble 
that Megan played king g7, and that Megan played rook c4, cutting the king off. Excellent. Okay, and then she won the way I already showed, because black, white lost the tempo. Yeah, king e3 and rook g8. Great. and then resigns because that's coming. Now, of course, we can always win by playing king here and here, um, and white's king is here, so it's actually an easy win. But but yeah, this, it doesn't matter if anyone. Wins. So very nice end game for Megan. Probably a couple mistakes by both, but the game was 94 moves, and they were in time trouble. So to make one or two mistakes in the end game in such a tricky end game, ending with, no time on your clock. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Yeah. I don't think you guys got the you guys got the cake reference, but you didn't get the Martin Luther King and um, Public Enemy reference earlier. Terrible. 